So you are now the world leader by a significant margin. Last year, you would have been tied for the fourth fastest woman in the world with Shelly Ann Fraser Price. The crowd's reaction speaks for itself. This week belongs to Jaisha. The most anticipated meet of the week would be the Tom Jones Invitational, and after the Miramar fiasco, we were due for some hot times, and that's just what we'd get. It would be the collegiate ranks to strike first, running a new world lead in the men's 200. Tarsus Oregot does his best to BOGO impersonation, demolishing the field and running a smooth 19.90 seconds. This ever so slightly edges out to BOGO for the world lead and also a new Uganda national record. And this world lead would stand for a total of 20 minutes. Courtney Lindsay, 19.88 seconds. Now this is more like it. After winning out of Miramar last week, but being beaten by the wind, he'd successfully pull off the repeat. A new world lead, but holy smokes, Joseph Van Belay is finally back doing his thing. This man's closing speed is an absolute anomaly, but 20.06 seconds for him. The women's, for once, saw slightly less exciting times, although Mackenzie Long would pull off a surprising upset. She'd go 22.18 seconds, illegally. <laughs> But to be fair, she beat out the NCAA Avengers of the women's sprints. The NCAA times are also faster than the Olympic development race, which was taken out by Favor of Philly in 22.31. To be fair though, this race was actually legal. The women's 400m hurdles went slightly under the radar, but we'd get a world lead from Savannah Sutherland out of Michigan, sniping victory at the line and throwing down the first sub-55 of the year. Yet more interestingly, Getting sniped and demoted to second place was Rachel Glenn with the second fastest time of the year so far. But does that name ring a bell? Well, she also happens to be the joint NCAA record holder in the high jump. She went over 2 meters at the indoor champs in probably the most unlikely upset of the championship. Some athletes just have it all. Moving on to day 2, and no one was ready for what was about to happen. That was an egregious 0.24 second world lead. The first legal sub-11 of the year, and she's absolutely demolished it. That also cut 0.2 off her own personal best. And I mean, look at what she does to this field. It was just off Shakari Richardson's NCAA record by 0.02 seconds, but it was her first 100 meter of the season. The NCAA record might just be on life support right now. And that time by Jaisha Sears completely overshadowed the Olympic development field as two more women go sub-11 with Tamara Davis leading the pack in 10.94 seconds. Also in a sneaky overall fourth, Abby Steiner with her first 100m back since being injured last year. And dang man, 11.05? She's sneaking up fast on them. Now, the men's 100m. Would the pros finally go sub-10 this season and rival the supposedly inferior young guns in college? <laughs> Not quite. Noah Lyles in his season debut and Kenny Benerick would edge out the rest of the field, both going 10.01 seconds. In all seriousness though, where did all that 60 meter speed go? This is the 60 meter world silver medalist, but you do got to give it to Noah. Man can win, and do it in a time faster than Fred Curley. Now out in the hurdles, Grace Stark of the Florida Gators would return, letting fly a new big world lead, and even a new PR, going 12.56 seconds. 
She's been pummeling the collegiate hurdle fields this year. But even with such an electrifying time, the strongest contingent of female hurdlers in history are out to play this year. And they'd let it be known. The veteran, 35 year old Nia Ali, barely edges out a win and into a negative headwind. She spits out a 12.44 seconds, pulling three other women under the world lead, set by Stark 20 minutes ago. Look at these dang times. And we haven't even seen the top three from last year's world champs. The next race would feature the man with a 10 year winning streak, Grant Holloway, and he'd fight his way through a negative 1.4 headwind to still run a new legal world lead by 0.1 of a second. It's Holloway's year, kind of like every year. In second though, was Dylan Beard, still running unattached, working at the deli, challenging the greatest hurdler in history, and giving it a bloody good go. The women's 400 would share the usual narrative, as college athletes would run the fastest times of the day, and handedly at that. Four collegiate women go fast enough to take the pro race, and you couldn't tell who won it, especially at this angle. But it would be Arkansas's Kaylin Brown in the first sub-50 of the year. By anyone that isn't Femke Bowl indoors that is. 49.95 seconds, followed by Butler, Anning and Price, only a literal step behind. This many girls going this fast is incredible, and this tweet really sums it up best. And that's another Florida Sprint Bonanza done. Now on to basically the complete opposite, the Brian Clay Invitational out in California, which is basically a distance carnival. And it might as well be a carnival with this clown ass performance. Parker Velby obliterates the 10k NCAA record by 28 seconds. And the rest of the field by an entire two minutes. That's double lapping everyone in the field. And this was the crowd's reception. Once again, just 12 American women have ever run under 31 minutes in a new collegiate record at this year's Brian Clay Invitational. 30, 50 point. It's as if she's not even there. 30 minutes, 50.43 seconds for number five in the world this year. She's ready for the big leagues, no doubt. The women's 800 was the Michaela Rose show as she was leading from literally one step into the race. And it was the gap that kept on growing. It is all Michaela Rose. Conditions are perfect. Here she comes. 1 minute 58.37 seconds. The second fastest time in the NCAA ever. And she's slowly getting closer to that seemingly unbeatable time held by a thing moo. And in the last piece of news from our malnourished distance friends comes from the men's 1500 meter. In a somewhat unexpected win, Colin Salmon, ex Newbury Park Chad, lays down a new NCAA lead taking out Nathan Green, last year's NCAA champ, in the process. 3 minutes, 33.96 seconds, and excruciating 0.2 seconds away from the NCAA record. Colin Salmon, absolute domination. And before we head out of the US, out in Oklahoma, Jamie Perez launches the discus to the furthest mark we've seen since 1998. 73.09 meters, a laughably huge 5 meter world lead, and some would argue, that's a world record. But the very next day on the men's side, we wouldn't even need to argue. The 21 year old Lithuanian animal, Mikolas Alekna, outright breaks the oldest world record in track and field. <laughs> Jürgen Scholt has sat on top of the doping era and the world for 38 years until today. And look at the series of throws every single effort over 70 meters. Most years only two people managed to squeak by this mark. I truly wish I could marvel at this throw, the rarest feat in track and field. But again, we don't even really get to see the damn thing. Honestly at this point, this is a cry for help. I'm excited to see the Diamond League and Olympics truly display these monsters on the big screen properly. So, majority of eyes were on the sprint exploits out in Florida, or funny business going on at Brian Clay. But who out there was watching the Australian National Track and Field Champs? Well at least I had a great time watching this at a reasonable hour. And let me tell you, the Aussies know how to make a meet exciting. Give them the bloody Diamond League. The men's 1500 kicked off with the most stacked race in Oz history, 
with Ollie Hoare, the 2022 Commonwealth champ, Stuart McSwain, Olympic finalist, and 17-year-old wonder kid Cameron Myers, who still has the world lead in this event for the year. Yet Adam Bloody Spencer swoops down around the final bend and does this. Spencer is in second spot. The Commonwealth champion moves out, looks for a spot to run through, and Myers is not done with yet. Have a look at this as they come into the straight. There's six or seven across the track. Adam Spencer's in front. Ollie Hoare trying to get them. Spencer's in front. Can he hang on? Yes, he does. He calls it the boil over. No one saw that one coming, and neither did he. And you just gotta love the way the Australians celebrate. Somehow, the women's 800m at an Oz Nationals would showcase the fastest 800m in the world so far, as 19 year old Claudia Hollingsworth takes the crown. She's 18 years of age, what a runner she is, this is outstanding, what a star, it's Hollingsworth called. 1 minute 58.42 seconds, with three other women behind her also going sub 2. That's just outright ridiculous for a country's national championship, let alone a shithole like Australia. And the discus is just going crazy no matter where you go right now. Matt Denny goes for the world number 3 distance, and goddamn is the discus a beauty when you see it from a reasonable camera angle. An absolutely ginormous 69.35 meters to break the Oz record. He's been 4th at both the last world champs and olympics, so he's looking hot to go for a medal this year. And it's this late in the video, but finally, some jumps. First the men's under 20 was won by Mason McGroder with an incredible 7.73 meters. Sounds pretty standard, yeah? Well, he's 15 years old. What the actual fuck? Who's born in 2008 and jumped further? Maybe the Aussies really have figured something out, but Christopher Mitrovsky in the men's open long took a win by 29 centimeters, a huge jump, 8.32 meters. Definitely a kangaroo joke to be made here. And lastly, in the women's high jump, we finally got the Oz Golden Girls matchup. Olympic silver medalist Nicola Oli Slagers vs 2022 world champion Eleanor Patterson. Patterson would bail out after 195, and Oli Slagers would put on another world class performance, clearing 201 without even a lick. He does, it's enormous! A huge leap! She then took three exciting attempts at 206, with only one of them being kind of close. Well, that was definitely the best week in outdoor so far. But with the good, comes the bad, as Flowtrack takes over the Diamond League, dooming track and field for the rest of eternity. Thanks for watching, see ya in China.